When I was a kid, when I was small, I wanted Star Wars. That was, that was my toy of preference. I loved Star Wars. I'm not sure what the, the toys are now that kids love, but whatever the best thing is now, I know my son liked these little skateboard things called tech decks. My daughter liked Legos. I'm not sure what it is now, but for me, when I was a kid, my toy of preference was Star Wars. Love Star Wars. Watched all the movies until recently. Watched all the movies. I, I enacted. I put myself in the movies. And I just love Star Wars. So when I was about 10, 11, 12 years old, I asked, or I wanted the Millennium Falcon. That was the, the, the big ship that Han Solo and Chewbacca drove or flew. And, you know, to, to, if I'm being honest, if I'm being really, really honest, uh, it's embarrassing how, how old I was when I still got Star Wars for Christmas. But I wanted the Millennium Falcon. That's the toy that I wanted, that I had to have. And I knew I couldn't ask my parents for it. See, my parents, you know, we weren't wealthy. We weren't rich. My dad was in the military and my mother was a nurse. So I knew I really couldn't ask them to get it for me. It was one of the more higher priced Star Wars um, toys. You know, I could get action figures. I could get smaller toys. But the Millennium Falcon, that was a big one. So I did, like most kids do, when they want something big that they may or might not think their parent can afford, I asked Santa for the Millennium Falcon. And so about two weeks from Christmas, you know, our, our tree is filling up with toys, right? And every day I'm checking under the tree, me and my sister, because I asked my parents as well, but I asked in general, I wanted a list of things on it was Millennium Falcon. My parents told me they would, they would get what they could and that they would ask Santa to help with the rest. So the Millennium Falcon was on the same list that I gave my parents to give, to give, to give me for Christmas. And so every, every day leading up to Christmas, I checked under the tree. My sister and I were both reaching under there. My mom would get mad. Don't go, don't leave the toys alone. She didn't want us checking and shaking because she tried her best to make sure that every, that both of us had an equal number of presents under the tree. So we would check who had the biggest ones, who had the most ones. And she didn't want us, she didn't want us fighting over, over who got more or whose were bigger. So we really couldn't, in front of her, go under there and shake and investigate what the toys were. But we tried, right? We would look. And so for, for days I looked and I knew it was a big toy. So I knew what kind of box it would be in if indeed it was under the tree. So for days I looked and nothing appeared to be a box that would hold the Millennium Falcon. Days went by, finally Christmas comes and we wake up at like three in the morning. I don't know what kids do now, but my, my kids sleep in. You have always slept in. We used to get up before the sun came up to check if Santa Claus came. So we come down the stairs and lo and behold, there is the Millennium Falcon. Not wrapped up because Santa Claus doesn't wrap presents, right? He assembles and brings them and puts them under the tree. So there were wrapped presents from my parents and there was the Millennium Falcon under the tree. The toy I had wanted more than anything, maybe, maybe since. The biggest toy of my life I had ever wanted, the biggest gift I had ever wanted was under my tree. The Millennium Falcon. So I'm excited. So, so for, for hours on Christmas Day and for days after, all I did was play with the Millennium Falcon. I'm flying around, pew, pew, I'm doing all the shooting noises, the corny, pew, I'm flying through the house. My mom's going crazy. Get out of my face, boy, with that damn toy. She going crazy. But I was in heaven for hours on Christmas Day and for days after playing with the Millennium Falcon. To the neglect, I don't even know, to the neglect of other presents. So on Christmas, I, I unwrapped many more presents, right? My mom had to force me and my sister, me specifically, to sit down and finish opening the presents because as soon as I saw the Millennium Falcon, I was done. I was done. Christmas was an A++ at that moment. 
but she made me open up all the other presents. A lot were cool. Football, I got action figures from for Star Wars. I got all kinds of other toys and presents from Santa and from my parents and from my siblings on that day. But the Millennium Falcon was the one I played with for days, for days, right? So, so this is Christmas. Now we're going two weeks into it. Now we're at New Year's, right? The new year, we're back in school. And I remember I went to school, I came home, and for some reason I wanted to play with one of the other toys I had gotten for Christmas. Right, it might have been uh, the X-Wing fighter or it might have been an action figure. I believe it was Star Wars, but it wasn't the Millennium Falcon. Right, I'm trying to find it. I'm looking around in my, in my toy box, in my room. I'm trying to find this toy. I can't find it. It's nowhere to be find, found. So I asked my mom, hey, mom, uh, uh, where, is, where is such and such toy? I put it on, on, my, on my desk. Or I put it on my shelf or I put it in my toy box. I don't see it. Have you seen my toy? Have you seen this other toy? My mom proceeds to tell me, oh, I gave that toy to, to, your, to your friend down the street, to the, the neighbor down the street. Because you see, he didn't get any toys for Christmas. Or he didn't get a lot of toys for Christmas. Or he didn't get what he wanted for Christmas. So I thought since you weren't playing with it, I would help make his day. I would help make his, his holiday a little better since you didn't really care about that toy. And she didn't say it in a mean way. She wasn't being, uh, uh, she wasn't reprimanding me or punishing me. She just thought that if I wasn't using that gift, that toy, that another boy could better appreciate it, could better use it. So she chose to give it away, to give it away. And so in that moment, I learned a very, very valuable lesson that I have carried with me my whole life and that I want to share with you. See, there are three laws to your gift. Right now, I'm taking what, what that gift was to, and I'm personalizing it to us, to me and to you. Because all of us have been given a gift. All of us have been given many gifts. We've been given many gifts from God, right, from the universe, right? We have been given abilities and talents that only we have, and a combination of abilities and talents and skills that only we have. That's our gift. And so law number one of the three laws of the gift, of your gift, is that you must recognize that there is a gift under this tree that is just for you. Right, there's a combination of talents, a combination of skills, a combination of abilities that only you have. That only you have. That you, that, that you alone in, in, in the more than a billion people on the planet, only you are made the way you're made. Only I am made the way I, I am made. So we have to recognize that, that although we may want something else or we may... May, may think we deserve something else, there is a gift inside of us that is meant for us. So under my tree, when I was a kid, there were gifts that were mine, not my sister's, not my brother's, mine, that had Bobby on it. Right, so law, law number one is, is even though you think that there's nothing good about you, or you may think that you have no special skills or talents or abilities, there are gifts inside of you that are meant just for you that can be brought to the world only by you that's your gift right that's law number one law number two unlike mommy blueford like my mama my mommy who i miss dearly who said don't shake those toys don't play with those toys leave that tree alone god wants you to to investigate your gifts your gifts are to be investigated. Learn who you are. Learn what you can do. Discover your abilities. Shake your gift. It's not meant to be there and just sit there and lay dormant and be unused. You have to sit, you have to investigate it. You have to, you have to water it and nourish it, whatever it is. 
Right, that nugget of, of, of belief you have inside of you, of, of excitement you have to do something, that's a gift. But you have to nourish it and learn about it and investigate it. You have to shake it. That's law two. Number three, law number three, and this is the important one that was the takeaway from my story. If you don't use your gift and you waste it, it's going to be gone one day. Right, there's a gift, there is a talent, there's a skill or a combination of those things that only you have, but you have to use it. And if you don't use it and you waste it, it's gone. And many times you can't get it back. And more importantly, it's gone from the world. I'm not kidding when I tell you that there are, there are things, books, ideas, inventions, abilities, creations that only you can bring to this world. That only I can bring to this world. And if that gift is not nourished and cherished and used and played with, then it's wasted. So those are the three laws, guys. You, you have abilities and talents. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what you feel. I know you get upset and you feel down sometimes. So do I. Because you want a gift that you think somebody else has. Or you want a gift that you think you want. But you have a gift under the tree. You have a gift that has your name on it. Number one, recognize that. That there's a gift for you. Only you. Number two, you have to investigate it. Shake it. Reach under there. Grab it. Right? Shake it. Listen to it. Investigate it. And then once you open it, and you're opening your whole life, guys, I'm continuing to open my gifts. But once you open it, you have to use it. You have to use it, even if, even if it means you feel scared or embarrassed. You have to use your gift. So don't let anybody tell you anything else than that. Right? You have a gift. Right? That gift comes with those three laws. Recognize that you have your gift that's only for you. Right? Shake it, investigate it, discover it, and then ultimately make sure that you use it so that you can give that gift to the rest of us. So that the rest of the world can share and embrace and enjoy that gift that must be brought to us only by you.